Hello children, in order to celebrate Chinese New Year, which is on Friday, February the 12th, um, in Lower Key Stage 2, there's been lots of activities on Teams and on the website to do with Chinese New Year. It seemed like a nice um, end of term range of activities, sort of a break from the normal um, maths and literacy you've been doing. Anyway, we had quite a few books in school um, based in China or myths and legends uh, and we've chosen this one which is The Chinese Emperor's New Clothes which is akin to the story uh, The King Without His Clothes. Uh, this is a little brief synopsis. Ming Da is only nine years old when he becomes the Emperor of China. His ministers take advantage of the boy emperor by stealing rice, gold and precious stones. But Ming Da has a plan. He orders his tailors to make him magical new clothes that only honest people can see. Can Ming Da outsmart his ministers and save his country? So the Chinese Emperor's New Clothes by Ying Chang Compostein. By now you have probably heard the old folk tale about the Emperor's new clothes. Two sly tailors fool a vain emperor into believing he is wearing magical clothes, when in fact he is parading through town, buck naked. The truth is that the story took place here in China, and without any tricky tailors, here is the real story. When Ming Da was nine, he became the emperor of China. His ministers thought the boy emperor was too young to rule and took advantage of him. They stole silks to make themselves fine clothes. They stole rice from the emperor's warehouses and sold it to dishonest merchants. And they robbed the royal treasury of gold and precious stones. They left the boy emperor with no cloth to dress the poor, no food to feed the hungry and no money to run his kingdom. Ming Da knew that if he fired the corrupt ministers, they would rebel against him. Day and night, the boy emperor searched for a way to save his kingdom, but he couldn't think of anything. Until a month before Chinese New Year, traditionally people dress in new clothes on New Year's Day, so evil spirits won't recognise them. When Ming Da's loyal tailors came with the design for his new clothes, the boy emperor was gazing out of the window at the children begging on the streets. You will look magnificent in the parade, the old tailor said, holding the cloth higher. Ming Da glanced at the dragon stitched above fluffy clouds. He wished he could dress the street children just as finely. Do you like it? asked the young tailor. Oh, very nice, said Ming Da, staring at the crow monkey and rat fleeing from the dragon. Suddenly he had an idea. My ministers are stealing from me. Will you help me to outwit them? Of course, said his tailors. So Ming Da told them his plan. The next day Ming Da summoned his ministers. I want to show you the magical new clothes these fine tailors made for me, he said. Magical? asked the agriculture minister sceptically. Yes, Honest people will see their true splendour, while the dishonest will, own, will see only burlap sacks, said the young tailor. Please show us, said the plump war minister. Certainly, Ming Da hopped off his throne and stepped behind a screen. The tailors helped him put on an old rice sack painted with ink and vegetable juices. When Ming Da stepped out, the ministers stared at the boy emperor, mouths agape. Uh, most excellent, don't you think? Ming Da spread his arms wide. Feel the sleeves, he shook his arms. The trade minister broke into a cold sweat. He stroked the rough sack. Um, it, it, it's softer than the finest silk. The, the, the dragon's eyes are so alive, stuttered the war minister. We use the finest black pearls from the South China Sea, said the young tailor. The ministers exclaimed their approval, each louder than the last. Unbelievable! 
astonishing, magnificent. These tailors are at your service. Who wants magical new clothes? asked the young emperor. The ministers quickly raised their hands. Excellent. Tailors get to work, ordered Mingdar. So the tailors cut, set up cutting tables, coffers and trunks behind a large screen. They worked day and night. The news about the magical clothes spread like fire in a dry field. The citizen looked forward to seeing the lavish new clothes at the New Year's Day parade, except the dishonest merchants. Soon came the fitting for the ministers. Ming Da skipped his daily visit to the orphanage and hid behind a screen to watch. When the trade minister entered, the young tailor held, held up a rice sack. See how the rubies and pearls in the crow's eyes and beak sparkle in the light. Face pale, the minister glared at the tailor. Why is there only one crow, he demanded. We ran out of jewels, said the young tailor. I will supply all the jewels you need. Just make mine more splendid than the others. He stormed out without trying on his new clothes. When the war minister entered, the young tailor held up a rice sack. Don't you love the extravagant details of the clever monkey? The minister squinted his eyes at the drawing of a sly monkey stealing gold. It is unbelievable, let me try it on. The tailors helped him into his robe and tightly wrapped a straw rope round his chubby waist. How does it fit? asked the young tailor. Uh, can you make it bigger? The minister gasped for air, waved his arms about. Yes, but we ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay with the purest gold, just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. When the agriculture minister entered, the old tailor was busily trimming the bottom of a rice sack with scissors. The minister looked at it from all angles, beads of sweat rolled down his face. See how the rat's shiny eyes look alive. Oh yes, it's astonishing. The minister stared at the drawing of a long-whiskered rat stealing rice. The tailors helped the minister into his robe. How does it fit, asked the young tailor. The minister looked down at his bare legs. Can you make it longer? He rubbed his knobbly knees. Uh, we ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay you the best rice that you can trade. Just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. In the days that followed, the ministers delivered baskets of precious gems, gold and rice to the tailors. With the jewels and gold, Mingdar bought cloth to dress the poor. With the rice, the emperor fed them. Soon came the morning of new, the New Year's Day parade. When Ming Da entered the hall in his new clothes, the ministers were loudly praising one another. Unbelievable, exclaimed the trade minister. Astonishing, cried the war minister. Magnificent, shouted the agriculture minister. You all look splendid. Let the parade begin, declared the boy emperor. Lion dancers led the way, firecrackers popped and exploded. Martial artists punched and kicked and acrobats jumped and tumbled. At last, the ministers came marching behind Ming Da proudly showing off their new clothes. The street fell silent and whispers spread through the crowd. Mmm, spectacular, said one of the dishonest merchants. Beautiful fabric, said another. Lovely design, said a third. Can you not see they're wearing rice sacks, shrieked a boy. The crowd roared with laughter. Ming Da smiled as the children sang and pointed. Itchy sacks, itchy sacks. You are wearing rice sacks, exclaimed the war minister to the other two. So are you, cried the trade minister. We've been tricked, shouted the agriculture minister. The ministers fled China. Ming Da replaced them with honest councillors and ruled for many years. His people were happy, well fed and very well dressed. Now that's the real story. The emperor marched through the town to save his country. I don't know how people ended up with that old folk tale about two sly tailors fooling a vain emperor. Right, and then at the back of this book, there's some information about ancient China. In ancient China, the emperor often appointed his favorite son to succeed him to the throne, regardless of age. When Hu Yi, the last emperor of China, came to power in 1908, he was less than three years old. And there's some other information about how you can make your own Chinese New Year parade robe. Right. So uh, another beautifully illustrated book um, with a picture. And you'll see often Chinese dragons. Um, and hopefully, if you've looked, when you've looked at teams or on the website, you've been able to work out what animal you were born in.
I think a lot of year three it's been, and four it's been the year of the rabbit, some have been the year of the dragon. Uh, I am the year of the rat, Mrs. Kane is the year of the rat. Um, I think Mrs. McCormack said she was the year of the dragon. Uh, so you can have a look and enjoy Chinese New Year. <laughs>